So we're actually going to wait for Jian to get back from a potty break. So the first set is actually going to be um, Jian versus Kamigori on Antigua Shipyard. Just getting some last minute things in place right now for this cast. Should probably put myself on busy. Put music back on while we wait. I'm gonna take a drink really quick. Alright, so it looks like we actually are good to go right now. Jian just getting back from a quick bathroom break. As you can hear, the countdown is going down right now. I'll take the overlay down once. We're actually in the game. So the first map here is going to be MLG Antigua Shipyard. It's going to be Jian subbing in for Fiction for UCR and Komoguri. For Cal Poly Pomona, these schools are in the Southern California area, so they're familiar with each other. Um, interesting facts about Cal Poly Pomona, they did beat out their sister school, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, I believe, last week or two weeks ago, something like that. UCR looking really strong this season, bringing out, beating out UCI, UCSD. Both these schools are tied first to their position, and this game should set the momentum of who's number one in the group. So we have Jian, who is pretty much UCR's ace, I believe. I know he's their coordinator, but I'm not sure if he's their best player. And I don't know too much about Cal Poly Pomona, except they're really strong. Um, going 3-0 in the Chimeran division is a, it's a pretty impressive thing to do. And it's extremely more impressive that it's happening to two schools. It's an extremely competitive Southern California division. And we're gonna get into the game right now. Looking at the, uh, what was it, the bottom position here, we have the purple Protoss, Rev Jian. Good luck, have fun, and as the Teal Zerg up here, say for a bit of lag, the Teal Zerg up here, we have 
Kamaguri for Cal Poly Pomona. And it's going to be a ZVP on Antigua Shipyard. I feel like Protoss right now, Protoss and Zerg right now, um, the, the styles are very much in flux. We can see in PvPs, the Protoss um, really enjoy exploring very new diverse styles with more prisms. And Zerg, I mean, now they have their new hero, Stefano. He's been going straight Ling. And Ling and Fester is still pretty deadly against uh, Protoss at this moment. On this map, where you're not, there's not too much of a risk of an all-in because of how large it is. Um, Protoss players are still kind of struggling. But we're gonna see how this game turns out. Nothing too out of the ordinary here from Gian. Looks like he's gonna go standard gate gas core or something along those lines. Kamaguri, it's gonna see. We're gonna have to see if he's gonna go hatch first or pull first. It's going to set the pace for his aggression early on in this game. Alright, he is indeed going pull first, not even going gas pull first, so he's really he really wants to opt uh, for those lings, or maybe he's going for a spawning pull into expansion very, very quickly. He hasn't sent a drone out yet. He is already on 16 supply. He's not sent out a drone. Looking at GN's base, there's nothing much here as well. Both players looks like we're going to be heading into a fairly standard game, at least for now. All right, expansion finally going down for Kamaguri, so he's going to go for a pool hatch first. Hasn't got his gas yet, and he's going to opt for just one pair of zerglings to take care of the probe. So he's not going to go for any hyper aggression or uh, pressure against his opponent GN. GN right now looking super standard, only getting one gas at the moment. Oh, now getting a second gas, very interesting. And now Komaguri is going to send his first lings out to scout. Excuse my observing. And a nice overlord placement coming here from Komaguri. So at this point, both players are going extremely standard build, so there's not much to talk about in that sense that we might just see uh, deviations more in the mid-game. That's when Zerg is going to choose, am I going to go for a Roach Aggression or am I going to go kind of a Mass Sling, maybe even a Fester style. Um, Roach Hydra is still kind of viable in the matchup depending how off-guard you can catch your opponent. OGN does did get a second gas, uh, you know, at a fairly earlier time we might see some shenanigans from the Protoss player. Kamagori in place, playing it super, super safe. He's gonna, or he was gonna build one spine crawler there. Oh, there we go. Looking at the supplies here. Dead even. And, um, I'm not sure if Jihan's gonna go for any three gate expand, maybe two gate tech, maybe even a two gate expand. Again, nothing too out in the ordinary. These players are playing a very respectable game against one another. Now, Kamagori actually taking both gases at the same time um, at 30 supply. I would say that's fairly early. You can get drones up to about 40 supply before you can even start thinking about gas or grab a second queen. There's no second queen coming out from Kamagori just yet. Um, it would be really nice to have that other queen for creep spread. GN now just taking his expansion off two gates, feeling fairly confident on defending that. He did use the extra gas to probably pump out uh, what will be soon a good excess of sentries to defend any all-ins at this ramp here. Yet two more sentries going there. That's 300 more gas that he invested in his defense. And now Kamagori going for a very Ling heavy style right now. This is where things are going to finally start getting finally start getting interesting. Kamagori now getting down a Roach Warren, so he might be going for some really intense Roach pressure. He hasn't gotten Lair Tech yet. Um, he is pumping drones like like a madman. Uh, GN actually opting for a Stargate, so this will kind of be a two-gate expand Stargate kind of play. I mean, it, it's just going to catch, I think, Kamagori a bit off guard. He hasn't really scouted him at all. He still has the Overlord in his base, but he is going to 
um, fly in there fairly soon. Basically, right now, Kamagori's playing in the dark, and now just getting his second queen. Um, he should have gotten it out just to get Kree spread up, but he did invest those extra minerals in a third base now that he... I'm not even sure if he saw the expansion. I believe he has. He hasn't even saw the expansion, so he's just going to assume that his opponent is fast expanding and take his third base. A healthy amount of sentries here for GN. And we're going to just see how Kamagori is going to react to this early Stargate harassment. Um, he's going to opt for a Void Raid instead of any Phoenix for scouting purposes. Eight Roaches coming out now for uh, Kamagori at the moment. Finally, now on layer tag, I think he may have taken his third gas now, yes he did. So he's not going to go for any Infestor play, at least early on in the game, he's going to rely heavily on Roaches and probably Zerglings. He might try to go for some very intense Roach bus, that could be the craziest thing he can go for right now. Um, but with this third base here, that would just be probably not the best idea. Void Ray on the way towards the third base, I don't think... Well, now Kamagori knows that that Void Race there, he is attacking his Overlord, and there's not much he can do, he's probably going to lose that Overlord. Looking at Jinyan right now, he is uh, just trying to pick off this Overseer here. I want to take a look at what Kamagori has seen. He's seen the Stargate, he's seen the two gates. Uh, he hasn't seen the expansion, but he knows it's there. And I don't think he scouted the army composition. This uh, Overseer might, or excuse me, this Hatchery might go down. No, these three queens are on the way. That might be excessive. He pulled all three queens away from his hatcheries. He's going to miss a ton of vital injects here. Um, and these lings still don't have speed yet. They're just scouting around. I believe they just got speed. And now two voideries here going to harass the third. That's not going to do much with these three queens here. But what he is forcing him to do is miss these super vital e uh, injects onto his hatchery. Now we see Kamagori is going to retaliate uh, with a couple roaches here, or actually a good amount of roaches here, sending a changeling out to scout. And of only a handful of zerglings, this isn't going to fare well against this composition unless these sentries get in a horrible, horrible position. They, but if, if GN force feels just right, which I believe he will, um, he should be completely fine. Perfect force fields there. Oh, roaches still managing to get in. Oh, actually that's way more roaches than I originally anticipated. Um, those sentries are all clumped up in a horrible position. GN might have a lot of trouble holding this. If he does, he's going to sustain a lot of losses right now. And those two extra force fields do help, but these roaches are slowly advancing uh, to cripple GN at the moment. And it looks like, I don't know how well his warpins are. They're, I think he's good for another round. He only has three gates, though. He is desperately trying to get out another Void Ray. And it looks like he does hold. He does... Oh, Void Rays do finally come on the scene, and one Phoenix there to help out uh, defending. And now GN, he did... Um, suffer a good amount of losses. He's at 38 Harvesters now to 44 of uh, Zerg at the moment, so he's at an economic disadvantage, but uh, he's a bit more even than I think, you know, or he's a he's in a worse position than I think he's, uh, than he's comfortable with. Now we look, we see Zerg completely powering Roaches at the moment, that early aggression, into just non-stop even more aggression. Genius taking his third, all that money not going into extra units, and Kamaguri uh, he's he's poised for a next attack. He could obviously sacrifice maybe a few roaches to these void rays. There are three void rays out right now, so if they get charged up, uh, this next attack from Kamagori, if he chooses to do so, could be completely uns unsuccessful. A few phoenixes doing some harass here, and uh, Kamagori not taking a fourth base while Jinyan is taking his third. Looks like these roaches here are have are pretty much defenseless against any uh, air units. Kamagori is going to have to pull all his queens once again. Oh no, looks like he actually does have his queens um, all situated as he would like. It looks like GN, after he defended that first uh, attack or aggression from Kamagori, is sending him himself for a pretty good position. He just has to make sure he doesn't die to more hyper roach aggression, which looks like it's coming right now. Uh, he needs a bit more gateway units or just more units in general to defend against this huge army Zerg is amassing. Um, Kamagori is. Pumping out a few Corruptors, three Corruptors aren't going to do that much to Void Arrays. Kamagori right now going to start taking down these Structural Rocks and probably snipe off the third. Here he goes. He's going to possibly take down this Gateway, which would be a pretty huge blow to GN's production because GN's not on that many Gateways at the moment. Very nice force field from GN that forces Kamagori to pull away. And those Roaches aren't going to have 
anything to say about that third expansion going up, but he does respond by taking his fourth expansion. Very awesome choice from Kamigori. Um, he, it's not in too vulnerable of a position. His creep spread's really nice, so he can reinforce uh, that that fourth expansion, excuse me, rather quickly. Looks like Jinyan. I want to take a look at his gateway count. One, two, three, four, and five gates. Probably six up at this third expansion. No, that did go down. So he has five gateways right now, and he has to continually uh, pump out a few more units because I feel his production for at the moment does not match that of Zerg's. And it's, he's going to be in a lot of trouble, but I think um, Ji Yan's weakness will soon uh, wither away as the game grows long. Uh, the game continues, and he gets more gateways up. All right, this fourth base now just getting out for Kamigori. He's going to start mining from that uh, gold expansion. That's going to be bad news bears for Ji Yan, who just got his third up, and uh, he's going this very uh, peculiar void array. Stalker, Sentry, Composition, I think, I guess, against a very Roach-heavy uh, composition, those Void Rays are going to do a lot of work, but now Kamigori is going for some, like, Mass Queen Corruptor Roach composition, so this game is just kind of wacky and out of control right now in terms of unit compositions. Um, Kamigori hasn't gone to Hive yet, I think this is a perfect opportunity to get to Hive and get those upgrades. But I'm just trying to look for something in GN's composition that's just going to make me say he has the next engagement. But right now, it's anyone's game. At the moment, though, Kamigori isn't poised to be aggressive because he has Queens as his anti-air. He does have a few Corruptors. Um, but he's actually going to move out to be aggressive, just as I say that. And looks like he's going to force the issue here at the third base. He's going to try to go to work on those Void Rays with these Corruptors. He does have enough Corruptors to face off against these Void Rays, but they're going to get picked off so horribly by these Stalkers, and oh, perfect Force Fields trapping these Roaches just in a horrible spot. They're just getting slaughtered at the moment. Queen's a bit too late to the party. He do Gian does lose one gateway, but he's going to warp in more Stalkers. Even more amazing Force Fields here from Gian. An extremely frustrating position for Kamigori to, to be in. He's essentially thrown away almost all his Roaches. He is retreating at the moment. He feels like this was just a horrible idea for him, and now GN is now poised to press the issue. He is going to snipe off some more free queens. It was a perfect, perfect engagement for GN. And looks like he might even take down this fourth expansion, and he's going to be in a stellar position at the moment. He's just waited this entire game to defend against the aggression of uh, Kamigori here. And Kamigori really slipped up with his mistakes once he overcommitted. The force fields locked him into that engagement. And now he's in, a, he's in a load of trouble right now. He does have a substantial amount of roaches. Oh, they're actually getting a really great angle on the Stalker Ball. Oh, even a Warp Prism out here uh, for GN. He does manage to warp in a few more Stalkers, and that Warp Prism is going to go uncontested since there's no anti-air for uh, Kamigori. And looks like GN even bringing probes off the line. Let's look at the Harvester count right now. GN has 87 probes to 65 of Kamigori. This is actually not looking good for Kamigori at all. He, if he, Even if he wins this battle, he's so behind economically um, that he, he might just get rolled later on. But he actually amazingly manages to uh, push back Jian here. The momentum in this game is just swaying back and forth for both players. This is actually absolute insanity going on right now with that War Prism in the fray and uh, Jian's Blink Micro doing the best he can, he can trying to stand up to this ro these Roach forces here. And looks like Gion actually pumped out a few more Phoenixes while we learned looking and also taking a fourth base, also getting some more Void Rays. And looks like Kamigori is again out for blood. He really wants his third base dead, and I don't blame him. Uh, the longer his third base gets out, stays up, the uh, longer, the greater the chance Kamigori is actually going to lose his game due to the Harvester disparity. Um, Gian right now might actually be forced to lose his third. He, for he is forced to pull all his probes as well. I don't see any more reinforcements coming in from GN. He just only has a few stalkers and warping in a few more right now. But um, he's going to sustain heavy losses once again. Like I said, the momentum in this game is just going back and forth. It is absolute insanity right now. GN looks like having a really solid advantage. Now his third base is being absolutely threatened by the amount of roaches here. And even Corruptor is coming into the fray for Kamigori to take care of these void rays. GN, I mean... It, w it was actually not really Jian's fault, it was actually Kamigori's 
amazing hole earlier in the engagement in the middle right after he lost his fourth. And now Jian is actually in quite a bit of trouble. He just got his new uh, fourth base up right now, which is uh, in a horrible position to uh, be defended at the moment. I mean, once these rocks go down, uh, the roaches here are just going to absolutely tear through Jian's fourth base, and the distance from here to the uh, natural of Jian is just so long. Uh, I don't think any army reinforcements are going to come and uh, help him out here. And it looks like these roaches are going to clean up this nexus without much uh, much being contested. It looks like Jian's going to do what he can by w doing some uh, fancy war prison play here, but he is going to get up his third base. Uh, looking at Zerg's main right now, just going to try out, check out his tech. He's still on lair tech. He's been in lair tech this entire game. It's a 22 minute game right now. And uh, he hasn't gone up to Hive once, relying purely on Roach Aggression. GN uh, kind of in a sticky situation the entire game. He did have the advantage once, but he kind of lost it when those uh, Stalkers are too busy focusing down a, a base. And, and Kamigori's Roach just got the advantage of the angle, or the uh, engagement in the ang with the angles. Excuse me. And uh, third base here, and fourth base going back up from GN. And taking a look at Zerg production, looks like he's just gonna pump purely roaches and uh, purely roaches and corruptors. And look at the harvester count for GM: 37 now to 64 of uh, his Zerg opponent Kamigori. And Kamigori now is in the great position that GN once once was. And uh, this game kind of just settled back down as both players are macroing back up. GN retaking his bases. And uh, he did manage to reassemble a stalker ball at the moment, but it doesn't look as formidable, formidable excuse, excuse me, as it was before. And now Kamigori, again, he's he's out for blood. Looks like he's going to try to deny this third base once again while getting his gold expansion up. This gold expansion is going to be nicely saturated here, and it's going to give GN a whole lot of problems. All right, and here we go. The fourth base of or the third base of Rev GN is actually going to go down rather quickly. Uh, he's not committing. Oh, there we go. He finally takes down the third base of GN, and I think GN knows he's in an absolutely horrible position. Right? Ooh, a few Archons coming to the fray, but they might not fare too well against the Roaches. They may be mainly there to tank some damage, but two Void Rays are going to have to be the saving grace here. Oh no, a few of GN's Sphinxes is just getting cleaned up by those Corruptors, and GN also getting a few more High Templar for those Archons. It looks like this may be the final engagement of the game if Gian doesn't hold. He already loses one Archon for free. He puts the Archons in front of the tank, but I think the Roaches might just be too strong. They are almost one-shotting these Archons, and it looks like Kamigori is going to take this game for UC... for, excuse me, for CPP, and there it is, GG for uh, Cal Poly Pomona taking the first game there with exceptional Zerg play from Kamigori. Right, and we're gonna get into game number two right now. That last game was pretty wild. All things considered. Game number two is going to be fabled. Game number two is going to be Fabled from UCR against Woodstock for Cal Poly Pomona. Cal Poly Pomona, Pomona looking absolutely stellar this season. Alright, and whoa, there are like four times as many of you that I thought I thought everyone else would be watching MLG today. Thank you guys so much for joining us today um, and watching some Collegiate StarCraft. Gonna have some music back on while we wait, but uh, while we wait for the next game, you guys, you gotta check out the High School Star League. I know a lot of you guys aren't in high school anymore, 
I know some of you might have some friends at high school who think you playing for the CSL is like the bee's knees. So tell all your friends in high school that they now can participate in basically the future of esports here. This is only the beginning for the high school star league. We have so many more awesome plans for the HSL. You will not even believe when we announce them. So be ready. Prepare your bodies. Your body better be ready for the future of esports. It is just beginning with the high school star league. The website is going up. And uh, let's look at some teams here. Let's see if we see any teams if uh, that we recognize. I'm from California, so I only recognize California schools. Torrey Pines from San Diego, South Pasadena. Yeah, I mean, all these school, all these areas look like highly density. Actually, uh, they have a lot of StarCraft fans in these these states and cities, so no surprise there. Getting back in the game. Oops. I'm still on the other overlay. Oh god, so confusing. I'm actually gonna re remove the scoreboard from the overlay screen, sorry guys. It's, there's actually like a lot of things going on right now and oops, that was not what I wanted to do. That was a mistake. That was a big mistake. Oh 